fact that it is to be on the public record and secondly that they are being held to account by the public oath. So when you are an executor of your estate, are you also the tribunal record uh, court tribunal court of record? Yes, you are a court of conscience. Yes, they call it court of conscience. You are, you are indeed. But but remembering in their system, when you enter a a courthouse, even though in theory it is supposed to be a public building, they are treating it as their private lodge. You're going to a lodge meeting. Yeah. Do you have to be an executor to be the tribunal record, uh, court of record? Um, well, you are by default. I mean, if one if one holds dominion, as as the scripture speaks in the opening of Genesis, yes. Right. Then, by definition, you are holding the role of an executor. Yes. Mhm. So the short answer is yes, you, you do need to be an executor because that is the power that the judge is presuming in a surrogate court being a, a probate court when you go to court. Hmm. And can they run out and change the form of law in the court and keep changing the law after you say that you're the executor or does it make no difference? They, they can try that. Sure, they can go and say, uh, you know, we, we'll, uh, we'll call a brief recess. And, and some judges may try that. Look, I, I wouldn't discount the pedantry, like the small-mindedness of these people. Some will get the message, and if you behave respectfully, they will record, respond according, accordingly. But I also believe that there are a number of them who are tricky and want to stay tricky and will try that trick, Yes. And what remedy do we have, again, just standing our ground? Standing ground and restating your position. Okay. Did that answer your questions? Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks. Good night. Okay. I'm moving on to Alpha 999. Thanks for that, Connecticut. Uh, Alpha 999, can you hear us? Yes, I can. How you doing? Going well. Um, I got a question here uh, with regards to the records with Eucadia and, and uh, the keeping records with, you know, you're talking about trust numbers are recorded and whatnot. What about, um, is there going to be any record in place in Eucadia for those who might want to record or uh, record uh, uh, claiming land that could all Yes, land be records, absolutely. We have a that full land structure. Re- yeah, that, that yeah. could also be referred to when dealing with land titles office in various countries or wherever communities that you live in. You know, it's to strengthen a claim of right on claiming land or property. Would yes. that be the, the, the use of it? Absolutely. And in fact, okay. the beginnings of that is the concept of your promised land record, which is also available once you register. So once you register, you're able to pull off your live born record but yeah. you're also able to pull off your promised land record. And yes, absolutely. The, the public register not only, not only handles a, um, a record of, of all actions relating to any kind of controversy, but it records all aspects and transactions of property. And the reason it records that is so that all, all property has a provenance in Eucadia. So there is no... Um, ability to simply say that possession of property uh, is nine-tenths of law, there is a provenance. And I know people have this concern. They say, well, I don't want people to know my business. The reason people can steal things is because it's hidden. The reason that people can uh, hide things is because it's hidden. So the great register and public record goes back to an old Roman principle and as as tricky as the Romans were, there was one thing they never allowed to be corrupted until the end, and that was yeah. their registers. They registered everything, they registered all the transport, registered all the goods, registered all the transactions, and so no one could go and make a false claim. How could you see 
how could you see a, a sort of an example of how that that re- recording of of a, a claim on on a particular piece of land? How could you see that helping in a, in trying to record it to with the you know different communities around the world? How, in what way would that help? Well, I don't this is uh, this is a bit of a mind blowing concept, but I'll, I'll cover it this way. In the absence of a body of law claiming to be canon law, then what happens to any body of law claiming to be canon law? What is it? Sure. Right? So the Roman cult has been able to claim that its statutes are the rule of law for the planet Earth because no one has presented a contrary claim. Right. The same goes for the registers of the Roman cult. In the absence of a comprehensive alternate register, the land registers that begin in Rome and then spread out to the various colonies, provinces and states what happens to those registers then if there is no competitor? Well, they just assume the, that they're the sole authority. Exactly. So in order to challenge title, one must also belong to a superior register structure. You follow? Right, yeah. And if a person had, like if, if somebody had a house that they lived in right now, like uh, wherever in the earth, and recorded it with, hey, this is where I live, this is my my do- primary docile, uh, really there would be another uh, uh, another claim on that property by having it recorded with UKD, within the UKDF system. Is that what... Uh, Correct. And, and what happens is, what happens is that the structure of the claims and registers within UKDF cascade right, or cascade's the wrong word because the cascade's going down, but but rolls up right to the very top. Right. So it's not just one register. The register at the local campus level is a sub-register of a sub-register of a sub-register exactly the same as it is in their system. And this is why no one has succeeded in challenging their title except by force or, 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 or political acquiescence, because the whole system needs to be in place. You want a, a, a clean title on your land at that campus level or that provincial level, you need that entire system in place. And in fact, you can't even have the register in place until you have the law in place. So it's an enormous challenge that no one has ever achieved until today, until now. Okay. Yeah, and on, on sort of on that uh, layering on that is though is there some is there going to be some let's just say as things progress and time passes and people run into problems and they want to resolve difficulties, is there going to be some sort of assist uh, sort of a place we can go for assistance through problems, for example? Um, yeah, this will be the courts. The courts will be there, and there will be qualified people, and people will be able to, uh, you know, able to be part of that. And I hope they will come onto that. Um, so look, we'll keep going. But does that answer your question so far? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thanks. Good on you. Okay. Now, before I um, answer the next uh, call, I'm just going to um, go up and answer some of the, the questions that are in the chat that have come through, and then I'll get on to the next callers. Um, uh, okay, the question I was here was debtors, uh, BB. Would, uh, question was, would you be able to discuss more about the UKD courts and venues and changing the venues? Yes, I will. I, I want to I hold off some of that detail for other talk shoes, if that's okay, only because I want to be able to show you the mechanisms in place rather than just talk about them. So tonight's really the first time I'm introducing everyone to say, hey, the court sites as a reference point are open. 
but then the registers need to be turned on and of course the ability to lodge your material, to start recording your material is not there yet. Look, the principle is I'll cover this one thing, this principle now, and then I'll ask if you don't mind that we can come back to it later. The principle is this. Our law, Eucadia law, holds superior jurisdiction, superior right to Roman law. We represent the law, the rule of law. But when a controversy arises in any form of law, that controversy for the sake of the law needs to be heard and resolved. Now, if the controversy arises out of Eucadia, then of course it will stay within Eucadia. But if it arises out of another society, a Roman society, then that needs to be registered and recorded into the Eucadia courts. When it's recorded into the Eucadia courts, that matter needs to be resolved adequately before the matter, the same as a Roman court, needs to be closed. Now what that affords is this. When you seek remedy within the courts in terms of jurisdiction, knowing that the Roman courts is there to make profit, has nothing to do with the hearing of the law. It still means the matter needs to be resolved adequately. And it means in no way can anyone claim or spin or argue that in providing remedy and ensuring that the matter is primarily resolved in the Eucadia law and forum, that any matter shutting it down in, in Roman law is an injury to the law. Now you think about it. And, and someone will come up to this argument. If someone is murdered, whether or not you are the culpable for that, and someone accuses you of that murder, that is a serious issue that needs to be resolved. You may find a mechanism through what we're discussing that renders the jurisdiction of the Roman court invalid, but it does not mean the matter is resolved. That controversy still needs to be heard through. So it is a healing process of the law. We are here to represent the law. This will need to be explained more, and certainly there is going to be more and more material to explain how this works. But above all, it is about justice. And if the Roman courts merely want to focus on hurting people and stealing money, then absolutely any matter they raise must be brought into a, a Eucadian forum. And if under Eucadian review it is seen to be a frivolous act, then of course it will be recorded as a frivolous act. So I hope that answers some of what you're saying. I'm going to go to the next caller and then I'll keep going through the questions. Thanks for that question, by the way, Dennis BB. Okay, here's the next caller, Shupak. Hopefully I can... There we go. Hi. 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 Uh, this is Cynthia in Maryland. Hi. And I'm working on my documents for the birth certificate on the county of birth. Yep. Uh, and right now, what I have together is the order or petition, the acknowledgement unto God, the affidavit, the actual birth record that my parents created on the private side, and the state-created birth certificate. And the area that I think I'd like some guidance on is um, – is the notary's oath as well as my oath, should that be included? The notary oath is an important part. I know people ask this question. Uh, the notary oath um, is normally incorporated um, when a notary acknowledges in the, in the uh, affidavit or the um, 
attestation by the notary at the end service under oath. When it, when it is acknowledged under oath, then it is presumed to be